Ever since its debut in 1957, the Ford 9-inch rear axle has become the backbone, the most popular choice for drag racers and street enthusiasts as well. But today I want to talk about the Dana 60 rear axle. Now the Dana 60 is a Salisbury style axle, which means that it's got an integrally cast case and you service it from the back with a removable cover like the Chevy 12 bolt, 10 bolt, and a variety of axles. And again, it's a Salisbury axle, but as Salisbury axles go, the Dana 60 is on the top of the heap. With a nine and three quarter inch ring gear, it's virtually indestructible, or is it? Well, the aftermarket has come up with a variety of improvements and Strange Engineering has done us all a favor by reimagining the Dana 60 in the form of the S60. That's why I brought in John Quaz from Strange Engineering to tell us all about it. John? Well, we've started off with our own casting right off the bat. We have a casting for the GMA bodies and the GMG bodies with the ears mounted in. We offer all the factory mount locations with uh, relocation holes. We've reinforced the whole case, like especially around the mounting flange the, for the cover. The main caps are almost twice the thickness. They're very stout. You almost don't need a support cover anymore. Inside the case itself, the S60, it's all casting underneath. So you have that extra added support and strength and durability. Now, tell me about the strength difference of Ford 9-inch or Strange 9-inch and the S60. What are the limits and what are the options? They're very similar. The thing is with 9-inch, you could you go with more economical 28 spline stuff if you're just a street guy and you got 150 horsepower or whatever. But on a Dana, you come with 35 spline axles automatically on your complete assembly, on your basic assemblies, 35 spline. Now, I know traditionally Hotchkiss style axles where the center section drops out eight and three quarter, old Pontiac, and yes, four and nine inch, are supposed to be easier to service. Swap that differential and go racing or go cruising. The Dana 60, the S60, has been improved for serviceability. Well, granted, you do have the variety. You could, run, you could have an iron case for the street, and then when you go out drag racing tonight, you could drop in an aluminum center section with a spool on it. I was like, with the Dana 60, or the S60 in this case, if you wanted to, you could actually have a whole internal setup. Boom, pops out, pops right in. You could change out a gear if you needed to in less than an hour. Well, I want to see these getting machined. What's next? Well, let's go check out the machine shop. Well, John, it looks to me like what Strange has done is reimagined the Dana and done things with, with it that Spicer has never imagined. Now, as far as I know, the Dana was only available with leaf spring cars, never with coils, but you guys changed that, right? That's correct. We've actually come up with our own casting to cover GMA bodies and GMG bodies, as the gentleman's working on here. We even went one step closer to cover the F bodies, the 82 and 2002 Camaros and Trans Ams. It also has a provision for the factory ABS for a three-channel car, just plug and play the factory sensor. So now this one, everybody recognizes that snubber pad, all the Mopar guys out there. This here is the universal center. It goes for all the Mopars, all the GM leaf spring cars, and any custom four link or ladder bar setup that we have to weld mounts onto. I used to scrounge in junkyards and swap meets looking for Danas with this right here. Most Danas back in the 60s were round here. There were truck and van pieces. Only the Mopar, Hemi, and 440 passenger cars had the extra metal and the pad for the pinion snubber. And you guys made it on all of them. That's so cool. Oh, yeah. We, a lot of Mopar guys were ecstatic about that feature when it came out. Now, what happens inside of this CNC machine? Well, when it goes in, it's just a rough casting, and the machine just bores out all the holes. Any kind of mounting surface, it faces off. Faces off for the cover, drills and taps. It also cuts the threads in here for the adjuster nuts. All right, well, now we have ourselves a fully machined case. I want to see how these go from here to a complete axle. Well, let's go check it out. Here, Steve, we have a housing back from the welder. As you can see, it's already had the mounts and the tubes and the housing ends welded on. And Luis here is now going through the assembly. Now, final assembly on these, not easy. It involves shims, a like case spreader. I mean, Danas are some of the toughest axles to do, right? They used to be. Now, with the S60, we eliminated the case spreader holes, so you don't need a case spreader. There's no more shims, because now you have adjuster nuts. So you just crank away with your, your spanner wrench, set your backlash to preload, and you're done. But what are some of the options regarding the gear ratio, the posi type, axles, and brakes? As far as gear ratio is concerned, we offer from 354 all the way up to 620. Standard axles for our S60s are 35 spline. We can go up to a 40 spline. And we there's a variety of posies, Detroit lockers, and spools. When it comes to axle shafts, we offer either a press-in, or screw-in stud, half-inch, or 5 eighths. Even if you want a metric, we can put a metric in there. 
Now, Luis, all he has to do is install the axle and the brakes here and seal the cover, and he carts it off to the shipping department. Let's check that out. Let's go. Well, John, I want to thank you for being our guide here during our visit, and be sure to check out the other videos we shot during our trip here to Strange Engineering.